All right. So, um, so these three questions are reading questions. So they are um, just checking if you read a textbook. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, vocabulary questions like this one. Specific gravity. I think that's a chemistry term. It does. It uh, um, well. It, it's density. I think uh, more um, technically, it's uh, density as a relative fraction of density of uh, water. So. so uh, it may be used to compare densities. You can't really specify the force of gravity or measure the object weight without first uh, uh, knowing its uh, its volume, for example. Then, um, and then so but you can use it to compare densities. I, I don't think I I use the term specific gravity all that much. Uh, I, I'm a physicist. I don't really have any fondness for chemistry terms. <laughs> I'll just say density when I mean density. Uh, so uh, a hydraulic jet can lift a heavy load when. Uh, so this, uh, I think I lecture on it uh, alongside the Pascal's principle. Uh, how hydraulic jet is an example of a simple machine that can give you a mechanical advantage for exchange for um, uh, reduce the displacement, so and conservation of energy is still held and all that. So it can lift a heavy load when um, let's see, load is on a piston of larger area. I believe this is correct. So um, you can also you know check in the textbook. It's a reading question. <laughs> so the way it's uh, supposed to work is this is the orange i remember uh, i like the example of uh, like a car show so one of the larger platforms have a car on it uh, can't draw cars and the uh, smaller diameter platform is the one that controls. So there may be a, some way to apply an external force. And the idea is the Pascal's principle, which says that if you have a change in pressure in one part of the fluid, and all of this is filled with some sort of fluid, uh, probably not water, well, some sort of fluid. Uh, when pressure changes in one part of the fluid, then the change is transmitted throughout. And if these two are at the same height, and this you had uh, this condition that pressure one is equal to pressure two, then in fluid uh, static situation, this relationship holds. And since the uh, pressure is given by force per area, or flipping it around, um, force is pressure times area. If a pressure here and pressure here is the same, then for some amount of force applied here, there's a um, force out that's going to be multiplied by the ratio. Um, so let me label this area A1, label this area A2 uh, by the ratio A2 divided by A1 times external force applied here, uh, because um, it needs to work out that P1 is equal to P2, and P1 is um, somehow real. I, I'm ignoring other factors like uh, uh, atmospheric pressure. <laughs> so just uh, relating to this applied force, P1 would be the applied force divided by area one, and P2 would be the what I'm labeling is F out divided by area two. So when you solve for F out, you get this ratio here. This is the mechanical advantage. So for all this to work, this A2 should be larger. So when the load is on the piston of larger area. Again, you can also should be able to find this in the textbook. So you don't have to go through all this reasoning. Um, although you could. Um, Okay, this is the last of the reading questions. And um, just to, uh, for, I don't know, clarification, uh, for avoidance of that. So in this class, we don't really cover Bernoulli's principle. I do believe I lecture on it, but on the with the caveat that you don't um, 
you won't be asked any Bernoulli's equation question on any um, assessments that matter. I, I think there might be one homework question, but that's it. Now here, I can imagine people um, checking this by mistake. Uh, Correct answer is this. <laughs> and the reason is, so I, I, the reason I can imagine someone checking energy as the tricky choice is we do say Bernoulli's equation comes from conservation of energy. So I can imagine someone thinking, oh, so it should involve energy. Now, um, the challenge there is that so if we are simply saying conservation of energy it would look like kinetic energy plus uh, potential energy especially gravitational potential energy plus some work done is constant like that would be the expression that you want but because the Bernoulli's equation deals with the fluid you don't want an expression that is, depends on def, uh, definite masses because when you're dealing with the fluid, you are really dealing with um, dealing with uh, small, tiny, infinitesimal pieces of fluid. So wherever you see mass, um, this expression becomes density here, rho density here, rho. And um, I think uh, last semester I did do a correct derivation or I followed the correct derivation from the textbook. Uh, this uh, work done, it just, it just becomes pressure. Uh, the, the connecting pressure difference to work done, um, there's more <laughs> derivation work that needs to be done there. That's done in the lecture. You can look at that and the textbook. Now, so when you look at, when, whenever you're trying to figure out the unit, you can just look at one term in the multiple terms that add. They should all have the same unit. And comparing this to the something that has a unit of kinetic energy, one half mv squared, comparing mass to density, it's mass divided by volume. So the unit of this quantity here is amount of energy per unit volume. That's why. This is the correct choice. Yeah, so those are the three reading questions. Hopefully um, they were, um, I mean, you didn't have to answer all three. I think you had to answer one. Hopefully they were okay. Um, and uh, let me know if any questions.